In celebration of our 200th episode, we traveled to the hub of the Mohawk Valley, Utica. And since the mid-1800s, the railroad was the hub of community life in the city. In 1914, the Grand Union Station was built. The 15,000 square foot waiting room has 47 foot high vaulted ceilings, supported by 34 marble columns. This magnificent Italian Renaissance style train station was designed by the same architects who designed New York's Grand Central Station. Back in the 19th century, Utica was one of the busiest commercial hubs in the country. Everything converged here. You would come here to get your mail, to get your products. This site was built in 1914 to accommodate everybody coming into Utica, the hub of central New York. People came here from all over the world, and this was the doorway to Utica. They came by train. And ironically enough, nowadays we use cars, and people come here now because where is the DMV located? But right here in Union Station. Union Station once had a telegraph office, 15 payphones, shoeshine stands, and a barber shop. Although telegrams, payphones, and shoeshines have mostly gone by the wayside, the old-fashioned barber shop remains. Since this was the grand entrance to Utica, when people came here, they wanted to look their best, so they'd stop in for a haircut right here in the train station. And uh, Danny Criaco has been the barber here for more than 50 years and has cut all kinds of important people's hair, including, to me, one of the most uh, significant and important, Bobby Kennedy sat in this very chair and had his hair cut in Utica at Union Station by Danny Criaco. Saturday night. He knew everything and told me what was right. There was day trips and fishing trips and camping in Saranac Bay. Long gone the innocence, but surely miss those days. It's been a long, long time. Union Station once had underground tunnels that connected the waiting room to the platforms. Today, the platforms are connected by a walkway bridge and the tunnels are closed. But our friendly tour guide, Keith, indulges Richard's walk down memory lane. For today's show, I had the privilege of going downstairs into the tunnels of Union Station. Now that takes me back, because I think that when I was maybe six or seven years old, my mom and dad brought me down here for what back then was called an excursion. We'd get here about six o'clock in the morning and go through the tunnels, and there were, you know, under how many tracks, four, five, six tracks, You'd walk through the tunnel up to a train and you'd leave this beautiful train station and then you'd go to New York City and where would you go down there but the beautiful Grand Central Station. It was just, well, unbelievable. There's the fruit of my labor when I get born to tell me that it's mightier than the sword It's sweet and subtle as a song of the wren Well, if a drunk man Take the time to spend some time at Utica Station. And if you want to learn more about it, the Landmark Society of Greater Utica's bookstore has a selection of books about its history. The future of Union Station has been bolstered by the success of the Adirondack Scenic Railroad. It has also spurred the restoration of historic stations in Holland Patent, Remsen, and now Tupper Lake. The Adirondack Scenic Railroad operates from the 4th of July through the fall and the holidays with the popular Polar Express. On February 14th and 15th, there are special event trains, a Valentine's Day dinner train, and a Snow Ridge train. While you're waiting for a train here at Union Station, you can sit in these very old-fashioned but comfortable benches, and uh, they're heated. The top's heated, the seating part is heated, uh, and the ducks are inside of here. As a matter of fact, many years ago, there was a very famous person who came through Utica quite often. She was very famous to my grandmother. And she would come in here and sit in Union Station, where I'm sitting right now. She would have her own private car, come in here and sit down and enjoy this beautiful building and uh, the warmth of this bench. I'm talking about Kate Smith of God bless America. Thank you.
Tucked away in the corner of Union Station is the Blue Flag Restaurant. I ate here this week and the food is fantastic. Come down here if you can find the time. But I was curious about one thing. It's called the Blue Flag Restaurant and I didn't know where that came from. So I talked to the owner, Dave Morgan, and he told me that in Europe, uh, it was a tradition to have a flagpole uh, in front of restaurants and places like that, hotels. And at the top, if they were really good and had been recognized as being top quality, they could fly a blue flag. And we Americans took that years ago and turned it from the blue flag to blue ribbon. Got away. Oh, take me back. All great buildings start with architects, and architects are also integral in their restoration. Bonacci architects were enlisted to help preserve and restore Utica's Union Station. Their work on area landmarks and new construction can be seen throughout the Mohawk Valley. Uh, there's several in the area. We've done uh, numerous projects at Utica College, the Utica College uh, new dormitories, uh, the fitness center there. Uh, we worked on an Adjusters International uh, in the business park, Solomon Smith Barney. We're presently working on Kennedy Plaza restoration. Um, we, there's several buildings in the area that you'll, you'll, you may not know that we've been involved, but we've been involved in. In our travels, we have visited historic buildings restored and renovated by Bonacci Architects. JetNet is an example of a historic building that has been preserved and renovated into a state-of-the-art facility. Tony Esposito, who was the owner of the Jet, one of the owners of JetNet, uh, came to us early on and we helped him uh, an analyze the building from a code perspective and a feasibility perspective, uh, which then made the decision to buy and renovate the building uh, a better decision. Uh, and that helped us going forward. Uh, with the design process because we had already established a relationship with Tony and started to understand what his needs were and we just translated his needs into uh, what developed down there but I give great credit to Tony because he has great aesthetic. I've always wanted to be an architect and or an artist so I started out in that field and I it was kind of driven since I was in high school and uh, I be honest I don't know if I'd be able to do anything else at this stage <laughs> so I, I do uh, so I stuck with it. Thank you.